Hey there, Bill DeWeese here, pro voiceover talent and voiceover career coach. Today, we're going to talk about the five mistakes the new voiceover talent make. But before we do that, make sure you take a moment to hit that bell so that you get reminders when I release fresh new content, which I do on a very regular basis. And if you like the video, hope you'll give it a thumbs up and I hope that you will share it. And just a note here that my fifth mistake that I'll be sharing today in my opinion, is the most important and most crucial to not only know, but to understand so that you can really make the progress that you want in your voiceover career. And my mission as a voiceover career coach is to help you maximize the revenue and the profitability of your business. Otherwise, it's simply a hobby. So let's get into it. What are the top five mistakes that brand new voiceover talent make? Number one would fall under the category of performance, and that is new talent tend to do things. They tend to read too fast and talk too loudly. That's a result of a couple of things. One is simply adrenaline. There's something about this that makes us, that gears us up. We might not even be consciously aware of it, but it kind of gets the, even when you've done this for a while, you know, the adrenaline gets going. And how many times have you, have you recorded and you've gone back and listened and thought, holy cow, I'm talking twice as fast as I thought that, that I was. And I remember early in my career, the number one most uh, most given advice to me by, by my clients in a session was, Bill, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. I wasn't even aware that I was talking so fast, but the adrenaline will do that to you. So you consciously put the brakes on and force yourself to go slower than you think. Now, obviously there are times when you have to fit 40 seconds of copy into a 30 second time slot. In that case, you will have to, to read faster, but I still recommend starting slowly and building up to that because it will make a big difference on your reads. The other part of, num there's two parts to this first point. Number one, don't read too fast. Number one, don't talk too loudly. In other words, um, projection. Uh, I work with a lot of performers, musicians, theater folks, people coming out of broadcast TV and, and radio. And, uh, and I, that's where I come from. I'm, I'm a former broadcaster. And so we tend to really speak from the diaphragm. We tend to speak, to talk to the back of the room and uh, even though we radio people know it's a one-on-one -on -one medium, we still, we're always performing, always performing. And sometimes that's appropriate. But when you're first getting started, there's a big mistake that people make is they're always, always, I don't want to say shouting, but they're pushing to the back of the room. I want you to get into the habit of, of imagining that your listener is really right up next to your ear. And even if it feels awkward and feels strange, do it anyhow because I guarantee you, it can help your reads immensely. So slow down and speak softer. And at least you will, uh, even though you may not always need that style, it will at least expand your range. All right, number two. Number two is this. Don't spend so much time on social media and voiceover groups. There are some good things to be learned and there are some really great and gracious and generous people out there, but there's also just a lot of misinformation there's a lot of information being shared by people who really aren't successful in their voiceover career. And there are a lot of institutionalized, uh, you know, folks who have been doing this for a long time and their mindset is really entrenched in, in the way things were 20 and 30 years ago that um, for whether, whether it's they really think they're helping or whether it's to protect their own career, uh, they're not going to be really positive and encouraging and supportive of what you do. Again, and that's not to cast aspersions on everybody because there are some really wonderful folks out there, but you've got to be careful. And at the very least, be discerning. Don't take everything that you hear as gospel because I hear it all the time. Well, Bill, what about this? Somebody said this. Well, this person said this. You're going to hear everything out there. So make sure that the information that you get and here's the, the hard thing about social media is you really don't know anything about most of these people that you're getting the information from. Get it from people who are actually successful doing it themselves. Those are the folks who will tend to be the most gracious and generous with the information. And more importantly, it will be information that will be use, useful. So don't think that just because you're plugged into voiceover groups on social media that you're getting all the good stuff because nothing could be further from the truth. The third mistake that new voiceover talent make, jumping onto the bigger, what we call pay to play sites, uh, casting platforms, auditioning platforms, namely voices.com and voice123.com. They're both wonderful platforms. I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars on these platforms over the years uh, of my career, 
But if you jump on them too fast, you're going to get emotionally beat up because what you'll find is voiceover is not an easy business to begin with. I mean, if it was easy, it's like anything else, right? Everybody would be doing it. Now, should you be doing it? Absolutely. Is it going to take work? You know it is. It's work, but it's fun work and it's rewarding work. And there's nothing like working from home in your own recording studio, cranking out projects and making, uh, you know, in my case, making far more money than anything I'd ever done previous to this. It's a wonderful thing. And you don't want to get discouraged to the point of uh, wanting to quit early on. And that's what will happen if you're not careful where you market yourself. And these are marketing platforms. And what I mean by that specifically is you get on a platform, you start auditioning, and then you've auditioned 100 times, 200 times. You've sent out 400, 500, 600, seven auditions, and you're barely getting as much as a thumbs up. And so what's the first thing that happens? Well, you think, why did I ever think I could do this? Self-doubt. Well, obviously I don't have the talent or the ability. And that may have absolutely nothing to do with it. When you get on these platforms, a couple of things. Number one, you have to have really great quality audio. You have to have strong auditioning skills. You need professionally produced demos and you need a very intimate understanding of how these platforms work. It's not, you don't just go there and start throwing mud on the wall. And I say that from experience because that's what I did back when these platforms were like new 2006, when I first started, because literally I thought, how hard could this be? I mean, literally that's what I thought. Well, I, I found out real fast, but once I learned, once I developed my skills, I got really, and I got really good quality audio out of my home studio and my auditioning skills were better. My demos got better. I started getting more work and more work and more work. So they're great platforms, but don't make them the first place you go when you get started. Number four, the fourth mistake that new talent make is they worry way too much about equipment and people who are first getting started. And I get this. I understand this. Uh, because I was this way myself, you know, I thought, well, the microphone is the thing, right? I mean, why wouldn't it be? We're voiceover talent. This is what our voice goes into. Why would this not be the most important component of maybe aside from developing, uh, developing my talent? Why would this not be the most important thing? Well, here's what you need to understand. And that is you do need high quality audio. You don't need a $1,000 microphone or a $2,000 or $3,000 microphone. You don't even need a $500 microphone to get started. My first microphone, which was a Marshall, that was the brand, Marshall MXL. I built a six-figure income with that microphone, which you can buy online for 50 or 60 bucks. Uh, and if you've got a, a really tight budget, uh, you can get great audio out of um, you know, a less expensive microphone. Now, you know, when you're making money, sure, yeah, upgrade, buy the $1,000, $2,000 microphone. But what I'm saying is that in and of itself is not going to make you a successful voiceover talent. As a matter of fact, you put a great microphone in a really bad recording space and it's only going to amplify your problems. What's way more important than this is this. And I'm not speaking specifically of the space I'm in, but I'm talking about the space in which you record. It needs to be two things. It needs to be quiet and it needs to be well-treated two totally separate conversations. And I talk about that at length here on my, you know, I've got, I think over 700 tutorials now on my YouTube channel. And uh, with a simple search, you can, you can learn more about that, but you want it to be quiet, but that doesn't mean the audio sounds good. You need treatment to absorb a lot of the extra reflections. That's an oversimplified explanation. But um, if the space is right, you can use a less expensive microphone and still produce great audio. Remember, I was making well over $100,000 a year with a $60 Marshall MXL microphone. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. Don't obsess about the equipment. Don't sign up for every social media group that talks about equipment. Don't become immersed thinking that, oh, if I could just get that microphone. It's like, you know, I've, I've said this a million times. I'm, I love to golf. Um, I love golf clubs. I, lo I, I love them. I know in my mind that buying a new set of clubs this year will not make me better than last year, but you know what I did this year? I bought new clubs because it's emotionally satisfying. I think this, it's like a do-over. Okay, now this time I can really do it, but you know the truth? I'm no better now today than I was when I was like 20 years old. 
it just, I'm not, you know, it's not the clubs. It's not the clubs. It's not the microphone. I'm not sure how else I can say that, but I want to keep repeating it because it is so important and people, they hear me, but I don't think they believe me. So it's not the microphone. All right. It's not the gear. Don't spend your time thinking about obsessing about talking online about gear, obsess about getting great audio and then developing your skill, then marketing, and then making your clients thrilled with your work. That's how you build a profitable business. Which brings me to the fifth and most important point that I want to share, which is this. Most voiceover talent, new talent, and even a lot of established talent, don't understand that voiceover, as well as all business, is a numbers game. Yes, you need to develop your talent. Yes, you need to have good tools. You need to have good demos all of that kind of thing. It's going to make your life a lot easier. But the end of the day, it's all about the numbers. And until you adjust your expectations around that, you will be very frustrated. What do I mean by numbers? When you look at numbers, you're really taking a a macro view, uh, a, a, a larger view of what's going on instead of just worrying about each audition and each job. Because what happens in any kind of performance endeavor I don't care whether you're auditioning, you know, for theater work or you're doing voiceover work or, or whatever, whatever it is. Every time we put ourselves out there, it's hard to be rejected. And a rejection of voiceover is typically not, hey, you suck. Get out of here. It's usually we just don't hear anything. We audition. We reach out to somebody and we just don't hear back. Get used to it. That's the way voiceover works. That's the way it works for me. And it's the way it works for everybody. I know it's the way it's going to work for you. But what you have to understand is you have to, you have to make it, it's not personal. It is a numbers game. But the only way you win the numbers game is by making sure that you're working a lot of those numbers. In other words, this is one of the things I hear most frequently from new talent. Um, somebody comes to me, well, I'm really frustrated. You know, I'm, I'm just not making any progress. Okay, fine. Uh, how many, how many emails have you sent out to prospective clients? Well, 10 over the last two weeks, you know, I've only been, I've been doing this for about two weeks and I've sent out 10 auditions. I've auditioned five times and it's just not working. Well, no, uh, you have no numbers. You haven't even started. You have not even begun yet. I heard a story back when I was maybe 18 or 19 that stuck with me. And let me share that with you. And this will be a rough interpretation. It's been a long time since I've read it, but the gist of it has stuck with me and it's so informative and it has helped me so much in adjusting my expectations. It was a story of um, a gentleman who worked for an insurance company. There's an, imagine it's an insurance office. There's a number of salespeople there and you've got the most talented guy and you've got the least talented guy in the office, or it could be gal, but in the, the story that I read, it was a guy. So, but the least talented in terms of sales ability you know, there are people who are great salespeople and there are people that just, you know, it's awkward and they don't like it and they're not good at it. That was this guy, but yet he sold more insurance than anybody else in the office. How did he do that? Because he wasn't as talented and gifted. It's because he worked the numbers. He knew, this is just an example. Let's say the best guy in the office may have to make 10 calls or maybe let's say make 20 calls to get three appointments in which he would get one sale. Well, for the, for the, the worst or the, the least talented guy in the office, he may have to contact 50 people to get five actual conversations and appointments in which he would make one sale. Yeah, the best guy may only have to do best in terms of talent, may only have to make 20 calls to get the one sale, but the least talented guy had to make 50. So it's not an issue of how good you are or aren't. And even though you always need to be improving your skills, are you working the numbers? It may take hundreds of auditions to get your first job. Now, over and it certainly did me, but over time, you know, you get better and better at that. And having the right tools, the right demo, the high quality audio, all of that makes it, makes it better. But just because you've been on a platform for three months with no response, just because you've done 300 auditions and haven't had a response, doesn't mean you can't be successful. It simply means you haven't worked the numbers yet. Is it, you know, is it tiring and tedious and hard? Yeah, it's all, it's a heck of a lot of work. And anybody that tells you otherwise is, is lying to you. Uh, And certainly, I mean, there are people who get, you know, you may get one of those jobs right off the bat, but then it may take another hundred to 200 auditions to get the next job. My point is simply this. 
understand that your success is a function of several things. Yes, your talent. Yes, your demos. But more than anything else, it's how you work the numbers. Are you willing to make the phone calls, send the emails, do the auditions, and then continually get better? Because with time and talent, you know, the talent development, those numbers will become better and better and better. But you've got to work the numbers. Otherwise, you will never be successful in voiceover or really in any kind of business endeavor growing a business because it is a numbers game. You know, it's funny. I, and I also, I hear people say this all the time. Well, the market's inundated. Yeah, there's a, I mean, yeah, certainly there's a lot of people who have hung out, you know, their shingles saying their voiceover talent. Uh, but it's not that, that way with a lot of things, but that has nothing to do with y- you and me. So, so what? It doesn't matter how many people are out there. What matters is how many times are you willing to put yourself out there? Because I guarantee you, most people are not working the numbers. They go out there, they try it for a while, they get frustrated, they quit. But if you work the numbers, you are virtually guaranteeing your success. So those are my top five mistakes that the that, that new, that new voiceover talent make. I say this not to discourage you or to frustrate you, but to give you the information, empower you to be successful because ultimately at the end of the day, my mission again is to help you be more profitable as a voiceover talent. If you want more resources to help out, look below in the description. You will find those. Check those out. Again, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and I look forward to talking to you again very, very soon.